Good evening, and welcome to the Wertheim Performing Arts Center, and to what will be a very special concert this evening, given by the Zad Nouveau Shalomo, the clarinet choir you see before you. Now, my name is Daniel Rodriguez, and I will be your co-concert announcer for this evening. We have a very entertaining program for you tonight. However, we must say first that we believe that every guest of the Wertheim Performing Arts Center should feel and enjoy the experience of the performance. And we ask that in order to assure this, that you please silence your cell phones and electronic devices at this time, and refrain from using them or any flash photography during the performance. Tonight's concert is being professionally recorded. For more information, you can refer to the second page of your program. If you must exit, during the performance, we ask that you do so during the applause in between pieces and re-enter the hall when the ensemble is not playing. There will be a 10-minute intermission halfway in the program and immediately following the concert, a lovely reception to which you are all invited to. Now in its second season, this ensemble will be performing works from Germany, Italy, Czechoslovakia, England, Spain, Austria, France, Australia, and the United States. So I hope you brought your passport. This is going to be a lovely journey. The director of this ensemble is a former member of the President's Own United States Marine Band. He has dedicated his time, energy, and talent in promoting this art form, and has provided these young musicians with an opportunity and an experience that they can carry forward and share with their classmates, directors, colleagues, and communities. For their first selection, the ensemble will be performing Renaissance English composer William Byrd's The Earl of Oxford March. Our director has added a field drum to give the impression of a march before the battle. Now, please join me in welcoming the director of the Zagnovo Shalomo, Mr. Rick Zogai.
Hello and welcome everyone. It is so good to see all of you. My goodness, we've filled this place. I love it. Uh, next we have a selection from the uh, Romantic English composer Sir Edward Elgar's Enigma Variations. The ninth variation is entitled Nimrod, a patriarchal name that is found in the Old Testament. The very moving lines of this solemn adagio are otherworldly. I think you will agree once you hear it. But before we perform this beautiful work, I would like to pay special tribute to an artist and friend that we lost recently. If you look on the second page of the program, there's biographical information about Victor Edward Leon. I came to know him many years ago through my brother and sister-in-law. The three of them were a solid team with Victor at the helm as the master artist. He possessed raw, natural talent equal to that of notorious artists in history. There are only a handful of professional Drip Castle artists in the world, and Victor was the best. Everything done by hand, no tools. Sculptures that spanned 12 feet high and 40 feet wide that boggled the imagination. I've listed two websites uh, where you can see what I mean, and we'll have a sampling of his artwork on display at the reception following the concert. Victor always worked with a mix of music in the background. The rhythm was like a metronome that kept him relaxed and on task. Classical music, particularly, inspired his creations. Incidentally, he attended the last two clarinet choir concerts that we gave here at FIU. Victor was a gentle and caring soul, and there will never be anyone like him again. I understand that his mother, sisters, family, and friends are here today. May we recognize you? Where are you? We want you to know that the world is a better place because of Victor. This concert is dedicated to our friend Victor Edward Leon, and especially the elegant strains you are about to hear. Victor, we miss you, buddy.
Wasn't that lovely? What a beautiful... <laughs> so, Rosa Vedra is a prelude on a Welsh hymn tune. Its composer, Englishman Ralph Vaughan Williams, has done a masterful job at interweaving the hymn into this lovely setting. It is written in a 4-2 meter, making the unit of beat the half note rather than the quarter note. This allows for more embellishment against the steady tune. Conducting Rosa Bedwin. This evening is the director of bands at FIU. His support of our ensemble is unshakable. He's been more than accommodating to ensure our success. We are so very grateful to him for his vision and determination. It is my sincere pleasure to welcome Professor Barry Bernhardt to the stage. Barry?
Anyone over a polka? Yeah. <laughs> Alright. Well, we've got just the thing. We're unsure of who the composer of this traditional work is, however, we do know that it is of Polish origin and that it was arranged uh, for three solo clarinets with clarinet choir accompaniment by Matt Johnston. Our soloists this evening are, why don't you guys come on up while I introduce you, Mikhail Marasikan. Mikhail, this fall, he'll be starting his senior year at the New World School of the Arts High School and, incidentally, was chosen to perform with the National Youth Orchestra this summer. <laughs> Mikhail is doubling instruments tonight. He's playing the E-flat alto clarinet and B-flat soprano. Next we have Gene Salas. And Gene just completed a tour of duty with the United States Marine Corps as a rifleman and musician. He served with the 3rd Marine Expeditionary Force Band in Okinawa, Japan, and the 2nd Marine Division Band in North Carolina. Gene plans on attending FIU this fall. And then last but not least, Jonathan Silva. And this fall, he'll also be starting his senior year at the New World School of the Arts and is doubling on B-flat bass clarinet and B-flat soprano. Now, the trio has stepped it up a notch and decided to memorize the music for you tonight. How cool is that? It's a lot of work. So, please join me in welcoming our soloists, Mikhail, Gene, and Jonathan in their rendition of Clarinet Poker. that Austrian composer Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart wrote was his Requiem Mass in D minor. At the time of his death, it was left unfinished and later completed by one of his pupils. Lacrimosa is Latin for weeping. It is a very moving work, and our concert master, David Aguiar, thought it was important enough to transcribe it for clarinet choir. I thought it would only be appropriate that he also conduct it. So please welcome David Aguiar as he leads the ensemble in his adaptation of Lac Mosa.
going to move on to a little bit of opera. Specifically, Rossini. Italian composer, he wrote 39 operas. Among them, the most recognizable are The Barber Seville and The Intel. He was only 21 years old when he wrote An Italian in Algiers, also known as An Italian Girl in Algiers, a two-act opera full of tension and humor. Algiers, the seaside capital of North Africa's Algeria, is the setting for Rossini's masterpiece, in which a young Italian girl, Isabella, is caught up in a very difficult situation involving, of course, fleeing from a potential suitor and longing to be one that is almost unattainable. Please enjoy this arrangement of Rossini's overture to an Italian in Algiers.
the most popular and critically performed opera. Set in southern Spain, Carmen tells the story of the downfall of Don Jose, a naive soldier who is seduced by the fire of Gypsy, Carmen. This masterpiece is full of melodies that are instantly recognizable. We will be performing three selections. The first, Agonai, is a dance from Aragon, Spain. Guitars, castanets, and hand tapping typically accompany the striving triple meter dance. Today we'll have a tambourine. The second, Habanera, is a seductive aria sung by Carmen. And the third, we have Le Torado, an aria sung by the bullfighter, Scabini, describing various situations of war, the cheering of the crowds, and the fame that comes with victory. The Zagre of Chalamon will close the first half of the program with a very strict sweet Carmen. And then we'll have a 10 minute intermission. Marching, if you please. Thank you. 
both film, radio, television, as well as orchestrations for Broadway musicals. He is well known in the concert band and symphonic band community, providing numerous works well suited for these kinds of groups. Among his chamber pieces, this is a gem for Clarence Clark. Please join me in welcoming back Nazar Mouval de Chalabon and her director, Mr. Rick Zogat. how we came up with our name, Les Arnaud Chalumeau. For those of you who may, who may not know, the Chalumeau is the grandfather of the modern day clarinet, used in the late Baroque and early classical periods of music. We decided to use this name to define us as the new art of Chalumeau, or Les Arnaud Chalumeau. I'm sure that by now you've noticed the diversity in our ensemble. This year, I opened the group up to aspiring high school clarinetists, and the gamble paid off. Aren't they doing a tremendous job? So, fun fact, our youngest just completed ninth grade. Where is he? Is it? <laughs> Thank you. And our oldest, I'm not going to point this person out, but our oldest uh, just completed her master's degree in music. <laughs> our music today is from the Renaissance era all the way up to modern times. We showcased this diversity in a concert that we played for the young musicians of the Greater Miami Youth Symphony on July 29th. 
This outreach event was amazing, and the children were in wonder of our musicians' talents, and they stormed the stage afterward to look at a variety of instruments and ask us lots of great questions. I pointed out the differences in the clarinet sizes, and I'd like to do that for you today, for those of you who may not know. I want to start with the smallest member of the clarinet family, the E-flat piccolo clarinet. Angelo, hold that up if you would. <laughs> Tiny. Very difficult to play, and we have our youngest member playing. Isn't that something? <laughs> and next up is the B-flat soprano clarinet, which most of you may know. And this is the standard size that you're aware of. After that, we have the E-flat alto clarinet, which is an octave lower than the piccolo. And that, Mikaros, has the alto there. You see the bell coming out there? Pretty cool. After that, we have the B-flat bass clarinet, which is an octave lower than the soprano clarinet. Who's going to hold that up? Stand up, stand up so they can see it. <laughs> They keep getting bigger. Next, we have our E flat contra alto clarinet. <laughs> and yet, one more the B flat contra bass clarinet. Jesse, hold up, puppy up. <laughs> all right, so the next piece we're going to do for you will showcase all of these instruments. Baroque German composer Johann Sebastian Bach wrote this masterpiece for the organ. How fitting, right? And it's been transcribed for just about every kind of ensemble imaginable. Just a note here, you know that he had 20 children, right? Can you imagine all the wonderful music they made together? What a family. His Toccata and Fugue in D minor is extremely, extremely challenging for any group. We've worked very hard to meet this challenge, and along the way, we've fallen in love with this magnificent work. You may have noticed the pipe organ behind us. I've challenged the group to come as close to that sound as possible. By the way, there's a slight pause between the Toccata and few, so we ask that you please hold your applause until the end. Enjoy.
Well, we have a very special treat for you today. We formed a quartet from the Fifth the Ensemble, and they will be performing a movement from a piece originally written for piano in honor of the Queen of Spain in 1887. His sweet Espanol. Sevilla is a miniature tone picture of the Spanish city's folk music and dance. Performing this stirring music is David Aguiar, and he's a concert master, as you know, and our ensemble's co-founder. And David will be graduating from FIU this fall with a double bachelor's degree in music education and clarinet performance. Next, we have Zachary Gassenheimer. This fall, Zach will be starting his senior year at Coral Reef Senior High School. And in January, January of this year, he was chosen as the top high school clarinetist in the state of Florida. Oh, wow. Next, Christian Barazon. Just graduated from the New World School of the Arts High School and was accepted into the prestigious San Francisco Conservatory of Music. We wish you more. Um, we have a Crystal Cabrera, also our ensemble's co-founder. She just graduated from FIU with a bachelor's degree in music education. Her future looks very bright indeed. So, I think you're really going to like this. Isaac Alvarez's Sevilla.
Australian composer, Percy Aldrich Granger, a piano prodigy, was accused by his friends of never being dull. Who knows Granger? Who knows Granger? Lots of people in here. You know what I'm talking about. A very powerful character, his music has stood the test of time and continues to entertain concert goers. Originally written for string ensemble on his mother's birthday, Molly on the Shore has been adapted for many settings, including this wonderful transcription for clarinet choir. Conducting Molly on the Shore this evening is the director of FIU's wind ensemble and chamber winds, Dr. Brenton Alston. A fellow clarinetist on B-flat soprano, B-flat bass, and B-flat contrabass clarinets, he performed with his high school and college clarinet choirs. He is a staunch supporter of our ensemble, and it is a pleasure to present him to you this evening. Please join me in welcoming Dr. Brenton Alston.
final two pieces are by Czechoslovakian composers. The first piece was composed by Julius Fischik, who was a conductor of military bands writing over 400 waltzes, polkas, and marches. He is known as the Bohemian John Philip Sousa. The entry of the gladiators, sometimes known as Thunder and Blazes, is recognized everywhere. Mr. Suzogai thought it would be fitting, considering that the Summer Olympics are just around the corner with opening ceremonies starting this Friday. Our modern day gladiators are competing for gold while our musicians are competing for notes. Trust me, there are lots of them in this march. Please enjoy the entry of the gladiators. opportunity that we have had this summer to make great music together. You have worked extremely hard to present what they are hearing today, and I'm proud of each and every one of you. You guys are special to me, and the future for you is very bright, very bright. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for being such an enthusiastic audience. We love that. We are so glad that you're here supporting, many of you supporting your children, your friends, family members. We love that you're here. Thank you to the administration at FIU, Professor Barry Bernhardt, Professor Richard Hancock, Dr. Brenton Alston, and Professor Robert Lundes. Your support means the world to us. It's because of you that we were able to make this evening happen. Thanks to our concert announcer, Daniel Rodriguez. Uh, 
And I'm not sure where he is, our percussionist, Carlos Perez, helped us out in the pitch at the last minute. Uh, there he is. Thanks to Patty Gassenheimer, Gina Aguiar, friends and family who have helped with countless other things. And to anyone else that I may have forgotten, forgive me and thank you. <laughs> um, we have a very, very nice reception set up for you at the instrumental hall. Once you exit the concert hall, you're going to see signs pointing your way there. It's a very close, and uh, we hope that you all come to congratulate the musicians and enjoy some very, very tasty treats that we have for you. After our final number, the ensemble will remain on the stage for our professional photographer. After we're finished, we'll join you in the reception, okay? So our final piece is written by Czechoslovakian composer Václav Neligo. He wrote many works for wind instruments and band. Uh, this particular piece is written specifically for clarinet choir, and that's what makes this very, very special and important tonight. It's in two sections, so we ask that you please hold your applause until the end. Without further ado, here's Bottle of Nelly Bell's Corral and Donza.
So, I just wanted to take this moment to present Rick with this plaque. From all of us, oh, it's, a, it's the plaque and a trophy little combination there. And it says, uh, to raise the guide an appreciation for your effort and dedication to the FIU Clarinet Choir. From all of us. Thank you so much. All the wonderful. Um, we have a very nice encore if you like. Yeah?